This Wednesday, Sajid Javid, Chancellor of the Exchequer, made a speech to the House of Commons laying out the government's spending plans for the year post-Brexit. With so much going on this week, it's kind of slipped under the radar for a lot of people, including us, and we didn't get a chance to make a video on it as it happened. So today we're making up for that and letting you know what the government's plans are. And we'll discuss if these plans are genuine, or if it's just a ploy from the government to keep the electorate happy during the lead up to a general election. A lot of this video was taken from a conversation in our new podcast, Too Long Didn't Read. If you want to hear the full discussion, as well as our conversations about the week's votes and the other events that took place, check out our full podcast. We're working hard to make sure the podcast is available on every app. But for now, if you can't find it on your favourite podcast service, you can always find it on YouTube or on Spotify. There's a full list of the services currently showing the podcast on our website, tldrnews.co.uk forward slash too long. Oh, and I promise I'll stop talking in a moment. We've done three videos this week based around podcast episodes, and we've got some mixed feedback on them. I'm going to pin a question at the top of the comments asking what you think of them. They allow us to get a variety of voices into the videos and streamline the editing process, which helps us keep you informed in busy weeks like this. But I want to know what you think of it too. So make sure to respond to the question I pinned down below. And don't worry, if you guys hate it, we can stop. But it's just good to know what you think. So before we discuss the impacts of the Chancellor's new plans, let's see what he had to say in the lead up to his new economic announcement. Statement, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Chancellor Sajid Javid. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Let me start by saying a few words around the circumstances around today's statement. We are in uncharted waters. But, Mr Speaker, we cannot allow that uncertainty to distract us from delivering on the people's priorities. So today, we give certainty where we can. I announce our spending plans for Britain's first year outside the European Union. After a decade of recovery from Labour's Great Recession, we are turning the page on austerity and beginning a new decade of renewal. And today we lay the foundations. With the fastest increase in day-to-day spending in 15 years, we will be able to build a safer Britain where our streets are more secure, a healthier Britain where we can care for people throughout their lives, A better educated Britain, where every child and young person has the opportunity to succeed. We will build a global Britain, a modern Britain, an enterprising Britain, a prosperous Britain. Today, we lay the foundation for a stronger, fairer, a more prosperous future for our great country. So we know what the Chancellor wants to achieve, but what exactly is he planning to do to make that happen? Let's hand over to me in the podcast where I explain. One other major thing happened in the Commons yesterday, that being Javid's spending announcement. Sajid Javid, the current Chancellor, uh, made a series of announcements about increased spending throughout various government departments. The announcement marked the biggest spending review in 15 years, increasing the total government spend by about £13.8 billion, which certainly is a huge increase to be making. That makes it a 4.1% increase in government spending from 2019-20 to 2020-21. Um, which is, again, 4.1% is a pretty impressive increase. The biggest areas of spending all saw an increase, so that's health saw a 3.1% increase to £13.9 billion a year. Education also saw a 3.1% increase, £67.8 billion a year. And defence saw an increase of 1.8% to £30 billion a year. According to the government, no department will experience real-term funding cuts and every department will see their budget rise. Javid claimed that he was able to afford the increases due to changes in government income and expenditure and that the difference between the two had dropped to 1.1%, which is far below the Treasury's objective of the 2% target. Labour said the government were just spending money that they'd saved for Brexit and the money wasn't necessarily coming from the right places and it wasn't a sustainable long-term plan. Uh, The left-wing think tank, the Institute for Government, backed that up, accusing the government of using a mirage of figures and said that the public shouldn't be taken by today's spending review. It doesn't reverse a decade of austerity and chronic underinvestment in our society and economy. And when you do look at the increases in the light of the last decade's worth of cuts, you can see that the cumulative change from 2009 through to 2021 means that only three departments actually have seen their total budgets increase in real terms. 
Those departments are health, which saw a 14% increase, the Home Office, 9%, and International Development, 8%. But that leaves a whole load of departments seeing their budget cut, including education being cut by 11%, Defence, 12 Justice, 31 Environment, also 31 Transport, 54 And the biggest cut of all goes to local government, which saw its budgets cut by 77%. And it's not even just limited to government departments. There are also cuts all over the union, with Northern Ireland seeing their budget cut by 8%, Welsh government seeing theirs cut by 21 and the Scottish by 37 So what do we think of these announcements? Some pretty massive increases in spending in some areas. Uh, the government is trying to sell it as a big deal, as a big change, as the end of austerity. Are we buying into this? Does this seem like a genuine strategy or is it more of a PR stunt leading up to the next general election? Well, just on the austerity part, for the last few years that they seem to keep claiming that it's the end of austerity, that, that this is the sort of end of austerity bill, that this budget will you know, mm. end austerity. So it's not the first time we've heard um, the phrase, it's the end of austerity. Um, yeah, the Conservatives and, were keen to start austerity, but they seem to have been even keener to finish it. They've been talking about it, as you say, for quite a while now, and yeah. it's not entirely clear which of all of these things will be the one that officially ends it in their eyes or in the public's eyes. Yeah, I think it's definitely more of an electoral pitch yeah. than a sincere budget. You can tell what they're going for. They realise that austerity was not a popular message. But I don't think it's actually a great electoral pitch. I think the Tories sort of USP, the thing that they've always relied on to capture a reliably large slice of the electorate, has been economic competence. Mm-hmm. And I think, especially when you've got like a global economic slowdown and you're going for maybe a no-deal Brexit, then spending a load of money that it's not clear that you have is probably not a great plan. I think you undermine your main selling point, uh, especially because the spending figures are based on borrowing figures that were predicted way back in March. Yeah. And they also use the 12 billion that's now counting the budget that comes from student loans which we have a video coming out this so a little plug <laughs> Big topic coming up <laughs> um that's not a sustainable source of income but yeah so these figures that were produced in march the amount of borrowing that they expected to be able to do that was obviously pre you know global economic slowdown mm-hmm. and i just think it's a really risky tactic from the toys to try and sell themselves not quite as corbin light but as you know we're going to spend so much on the nhs we're going to sort out the social care issue yeah especially when I think that only thing that that maybe could have tied together all those different branches of conservatism would have been their sort of fiscal responsibility and economic competence. I think there might be some small relationship between uh, your your Brexiteers and your disregard for economics. Oh, that that I don't mean that as in like Brexiteers don't know anything about economics at all. Yeah. I mean that as in. For lots of Brexiteers, this is a short-term economic sacrifice for long-term economic gain. And I think those people are obviously a bit more sort of fiscally hopeful is probably the best way of putting it. Yeah. So I think that this Brexiteer government breeds a slightly more expansionary take on budgets and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's happen? certainly interesting how we're going into the most uncertain, the most kind of like potentially risky economic times the UK has experienced in a long, long time. And yet the government's response to win this election, it seems, yeah. is to do the opposite of what feels kind of like naturally prudent. It's a really of high saving risk money of like, yeah. yeah, it feels like the opposite of what they should be doing, maybe. But it seems like a good strategy for an election, probably. It's also a bit of a risk because with all of these spending things, you've got an election coming up really, really soon. I mean, you have the promises, which will count for something electorally. But obviously, health and social care and education have, you know, for lack of a better term, like the big overarching systemic issues. And they're not going to be solved immediately Mm -hmm. by, you know, increases in budgets. Yeah. Which means that you're probably not going to reap the political rewards of these increases that quickly so when you factor that out the only thing you're really gaining is being able to say we're going to spend this much on you know these departments and if you want the nhs you know go for us but corbyn always one ups you on that one just to add to that as well i don't think it's the first time that um the conservatives have done this in the conservatives in the 50s sort of regularly did this which was prior to the election have a massive either tax cut or some sort of Give, they were known as giveaway budgets. So in yeah. 55 and 59, they had giveaway budgets 
um, you know, soonish to an election to get into the minds of the, the electorate that life's better under the Conservatives. Um, so it's not it's not the first time that the Conservatives have done this. I mean, obviously, that is an interpretation and it's not it's not fact that they've done this from an uh, electioneering standpoint. But, it, you know, if you do subscribe to that opinion, it's certainly not the first time that the Conservatives have done that. And uh, I mean, it worked for them in the 50s. I mean, they had I, I know the 50s are a completely different time. And I don't know these figures adjusted for inflation, but I know that in 59, it was 159 million pounds, I think, somewhere around there. So it was it was a big tax giveaway. And after that, they won a, a massive majority. Um, and obviously, times are slightly different, but the party stood for similar things to what they do now so it's not it's it's not an unfair comparison to draw i don't think but as i say it's not the first time the conservatives have done this and um whether it serves them in this election against a corbyn government who is wanting to propose uh even bigger public spending it's not long we're going to have to wait to find out really is it uh if uh, monday goes as we expect it to yeah we could be talking about an election very soon we could end up seeing these strategies play out in real time in not that long at all fun fun yes. fun more podcasts <laughs> if you enjoyed this section of the podcast you can hear the full discussion on youtube or in your favorite podcast app by clicking the link in the description we'll continue to keep you updated on this bill the possibility of an election and everything else so make sure you're subscribed to the channel also you can hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video and if you want to find more from tldr you can find us across all social networks simply by searching for tldr news and if you want your name at the end of the videos, just like these people, then be sure to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.